Lexi, what's going on? They converted you into a rebel. What do you mean we're trapped here? Hello from Ethiopia. After traveling to every country, Ethiopia was by far one of my favorite countries in all of Africa. And it's definitely one of the more underrated countries in the entire world. So I'm here again on this trip to share with you some of the most amazing off the beaten path places that you should definitely add to your bucket list. And the place we are going to start is where I am right now, the Omo Valley. You are welcoming uh, people from anywhere, but you have to have that respect uh, uh, in order to give for anyone, not black or white. You, you, just, you just have to be a person who coming friendly. There are more than 80 ethnic groups and languages in Ethiopia, and one of the most diverse places in the country is the Omo Valley. I recommend flying to Jinka and ending the trip in Arbaminj. Make sure to buckle up since you can expect to spend around four or five hours a day in a 4x4 on many bumpy yet scenic roads. From the stunning mountain ranges surrounding the town of Konso to the vast Omo River, all the way to the huge Lake Chomo near Arba Minch, the landscapes are both ever-changing and ready for once-in-a-lifetime adventures. Ideally, you'll want to spend at least a week in the Omo Valley to make the most out of your visit and to ensure that your stay is as economically beneficial as possible to your host communities. Before traveling here yourself, there are many nuances to be aware of when it comes to visiting any of the local tribes. If done irresponsibly, mass tourism can negatively affect the people who live in these rural communities by promoting a type of human safari where tourists only take advantage of the communities, point cameras in their faces, and then leave without paying them a fair wage. I have several pieces of advice to avoid participating in this type of travel. First of all, the only way you should travel in this region is to hire local guides who are from the Omo Valley. It's important that they have grown up practicing the same culture and speaking the same language in order to help you navigate through the different situations you'll find yourself in, whether you're in a local market or inside their family's home. I have linked a few reliable tour operators like Abyssinian nomads in the description. Only travel in small groups and be sure to respect the locals' privacy, especially if they don't want their photo taken. Take the time to ask people their names, have genuine conversations with your local guides to gain a deeper insight into the cultural practices and traditions of the various tribes living in the Omo Valley. I personally had the most amazing interactions with the Ari and Hamar tribes and I highly recommend spending a few days to connect with each of them. In some ways, tourism has actually encouraged the tribes to maintain traditions that otherwise may have been lost as globalization becomes more prominent. Be aware that some tribes have now become tourism dependent, with payment from tourists being their only reliable source of income when the weather becomes inhospitable for cattle and crops. Withdrawing tourism completely from the region could be disastrous for communities who depend on this money to feed their families and to support their farming practices. The key to traveling here is to only participate in experiences mindfully and to treat indigenous people with the same respect you would like to receive yourself. The Omo Valley is absolutely incredible and the next place you definitely want to add to your bucket list is the Simeon Mountains. 40 million years ago in the far north of Ethiopia, volcanic eruptions began the formations of the misty, jagged peaks and untouched forests we see today as the epic Simeon Mountains. Hiking in the Simeon Mountains is a highlight of traveling in Ethiopia. Not only because the mountains are vast and beautiful, but because the grassy plateaus are home to the Galata baboons, also known as the Bleeding Heart Monkeys. 
This type of baboon can only be found in the Ethiopian highlands, and here you can even sit with large groups of them, which is a once in a lifetime wildlife experience. However, don't expect them to pay too much attention to you. They have much more important matters to attend to, such as eating grass and grooming each other. The closest big city to the national park is Gondar, so you'll fly there from Addis Ababa. It is possible to trek in the Simeon's solo, but you will be required to hire an armed escort. Personally, I like having local guides who can teach me more about the culture and can translate when I want to interact with other locals. It's also nice to have someone else arrange aspects of the trip like accommodation, especially if you want to camp and you weren't already traveling with all the necessary gear. I recommend staying for a minimum of three days depending on your interest level, and you can expect to pay roughly $200 including tips if you travel with a tour and less than $100 or so if not. The rainy season runs from May until mid-September. After that, the mountains turn beautifully green and stay lush until December or January. So if you're interested in seeing the landscape during its peak beauty, mid-September to January would be the ideal time to hike the Simeon Mountains. But it is also the high season, and from what I've heard, the mountains can get pretty packed. We traveled there in late April, and although it was golden brown and a bit rainy, we had the entire place to ourselves. We are taking a brief intermission from exploring the mountains of Ethiopia because, as always, girls gotta eat, but also because I have some good news. We have a sponsor. Because you amazing people keep using my link when joining, the good people over at Skillshare are back to sponsor this video. And by now, you probably know what that means. I put myself through a new challenge while telling you about Skillshare. In other words, you get new skills for free and I am gonna be learning yet another recipe. So everyone wins. So today's challenge is going to be learning how to cook traditional spicy Ethiopian lentil stew while telling you about Skillshare. I'm usually a terrible chef, but I'm gonna be adding a bit more veggies to the original recipe to make it a bit more healthy. So let's get started. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're constantly launching new premium classes. I actually started using Skillshare before I even became a YouTuber and I continue to use it to this day. Ooh, this is gonna smell so good. And I also drove all the way to Little Ethiopia in downtown LA to pick up these red lentils and this Berber spice. This spice is really the key to this stew. It smells so strongly and the color is so rich. It actually reminds me of being back in the Mercato in Addis Ababa. A few Skillshare classes that I have been taking lately are all about travel hacking and I have learned so much. If you're planning on taking a trip to Ethiopia or to travel anywhere else really and you want to learn how to book cheaper flights and score luxury accommodation, I would definitely recommend taking these courses so you can do it as cheaply as possible. Now the last thing to do is add the spinach. As I was saying, Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes on topics such as photography, video, music, writing, editing, and more. Skillshare is here to help you deepen existing passions, explore new skills, and of course, to take the next step on your creative journey. The best part is that the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. If you've already done a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer. You get knowledge for free and it helps my channel out so much when you use my link. So if you want to keep these monthly Skillshare challenges coming in the future, please click that link for free and also share this video with someone else who might be interested. Oof, this spicy traditional lentil soup is smelling so good. 
well, as definitely spicy. The Berber spice mixed with the cayenne. Mm. This is so good. And it's bringing me straight back to Ethiopia. Which reminds me, one place you definitely want to experience at some point in your lifetime is the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Most travelers fly into Ethiopia via Addis Ababa, but not many choose to stay a while before heading off on the many different adventures spread throughout the country. I highly recommend cooling off here for at least a few days and exploring some of the city's ancient relics and urban vibrancy. Sitting on the highlands adjacent to the Great Rift Valley, Addis Ababa is home to more than 5 million people sprawled across 200 miles. An interesting aspect of Addis Ababa and Ethiopia as a whole is that it's one of the only African countries which has never been colonized. This contributes greatly to why Ethiopian culture and traditions are so unique and have barely any foreign influence. There are many different types of accommodation throughout the city, from guest houses to luxury hotels, so it can fit any type of budget that suits you. It isn't necessary to hire a guide, unless of course you want to, while exploring the city. Don't forget to visit the variety of historical and cultural attractions, including the busy Mercato, which is considered to be the largest open-air market in Africa. And you'll also want to visit the atmospheric Piazza, the city's old town. The main highlight in Addis Ababa for me, since I've always been fascinated with anthropology, was visiting the Ethiopian National Museum where you can see the real skeleton of Lucy, the 3.2 million year old fossil of our human ancestor, one of the oldest ever discovered right here in Ethiopia. Back out on the streets, you can expect the strong aroma of coffee around every corner and you should definitely stop in for the traditional coffee ceremonies. Meanwhile, colorful Ethiopian food and music are a constant throughout the city and I highly recommend going out dancing at a club called Fendika. Whether you're drawn to this city by its history, the nightlife, or its amazing foods, there's always plenty to discover. One place that remains on my bucket list in Ethiopia is the Danakil Depression. I was unable to travel there during my trip, unfortunately due to conflict in multiple regions, which is actually a very good learning lesson for those of you who want to travel to these more off the beaten path countries like Ethiopia. I always highly recommend having a local contact or fixer that has you know, a good understanding of the different political Political situations and can tell you where to go and also where not to go. There are basically two different ways of reaching the Danakil depression, one from the north and one from the south. Unfortunately, the northern region called the Tigray region has, at the time of filming this, been experiencing intense conflict for months now. So we planned on traveling to the Danakil area uh, from the south and unfortunately a few days before our departure a more local conflict erupted and canceled our trip. There were still a few of us in my group who debated uh, flying to the Tigray region to Mikele and making the nine and a half hour drive each way to make this once in a lifetime trip happen and as someone who has had experiences being too close for comfort comfort in these more conflict oriented situations, I can personally tell you that it is in no way worth it to subject yourself to that kind of stress and anxiety. These places like the Danakil Depression are amazing, but they are in no way worth risking your life for. So when you do have locals, uh, tell you that you are you know should not be traveling to these places please do take their recommendations because it can be very dangerous from time to time 
and I'm still going to recommend traveling to the Danikil Depression because it is a popular place to go in Ethiopia and I hope that there will be a more safe environment to travel through uh, very soon because this is also an incredibly significant place because it's where we discovered Lucy which is one of the oldest and most intact hominids that we've ever discovered which suggests that over three million years ago humans came from this area of Ethiopia and its surrounding countries which is also why Ethiopia is known as the land of origins. Last but not least, one place you absolutely cannot miss while traveling in Ethiopia is the rock churches of Lalibela. This mountainous landscape feels riddled with mystery and frozen in time. I had seen so many photos of the famous rock churches everywhere from National Geographic to Lonely Planet and yet it still took my breath away the first time I saw them for myself. If there was ever to be an eighth wonder of the world, St. George's monolithic cross-shaped church would surely deserve to win the prize. Unless you're on a very tight budget and have a lot of extra time on your hands, I recommend flying to Lalibela from Addis Ababa rather than taking a bus. If you do opt to travel overland, I highly recommend inquiring to local tour operators about any security issues during your specific time of travel since conditions can change rapidly in this region. Lalibela can be visited during any time of the year, although the tunnels can get a bit slippery during the rainy season. I highly recommend visiting for the Sunday Mass when the churches are filled with locals adorned by white robes, but just remember to wear the appropriate clothing that covers shoulders, knees, and for women, covers your hair. If you're interested in photography, you should stay in Lalibela for a minimum of three days. I stayed here for five or six days and it barely felt like enough time to see everything. There are a total of 11 rock churches connected by tunnels and caves and exploring the entire complex was a highlight of my trip to Ethiopia. Again, there are plenty of options for accommodation throughout Lalibela and it's possible to travel here on a budget while staying at guest houses. Also, most hotels are within walking distance of the churches so there's not much need for transportation, but if you're feeling lazy due to the elevation, you can always take a tuk-tuk which are also quite affordable. There is a fee to enter the churches, but it is not mandatory to go with a tour. Although, I do recommend hiring a local guide for the afternoon to tell you more in-depth stories about its history. If possible, I recommend visiting during one of the big religious festivals throughout the year to see the churches lit up with candles and prayers. Since Ethiopia was one of the first countries to adopt Christianity, the churches here are some of the oldest in the world and they're still being used today, nearly a thousand years since they were carved directly out of the mountain. I traveled to Lalibela in April, which happened to be during the time of Fasika, which is also known as the Ethiopian Easter celebration, and I would highly recommend it as it was a once in a lifetime experience. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe. Ethiopia is one of the most incredible countries in Africa, if not in the entire world, and I hope you get the opportunity to explore it for yourself. If you want to see my daily adventures, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Lexi Limitless and I will catch you next week.